My name is John S. Pennington Jr. and today's episode is entitled The Solar System Versus the Scriptures. And what I'm going to do today is compare the story of our solar system with the story of some main characters in the Bible. So I'm going to compare the Son of God with the, our Son that's in the middle of our solar system. I'm going to compare our Earth with the story of Adam, our Moon with the story of Eve, and our planet, our largest planet, named Jupiter, with the story of Lucifer and how they all came together. And so what happens here is there's analogies that just can't be uh, overlooked. For instance, our sun was created about 4.6 billion years ago. And our moon came into existence, they believe, soon after that. And it's been a controversy for a long time. Where did our moon come from? Because the Earth just is not a large enough planet to have attracted such a large moon just with its gravitational pull. Meaning, our Earth is not big enough in mass that if the moon was just floating by, the Earth would have just grabbed it with its gravity. It didn't happen that way because the moon is just too large for a planet our size. And in fact, there's about 171 to 193 um, objects in the solar system. And I'm not counting all the asteroids, but there's one sun, there are eight planets, two dwarf planets, and there are a few other discovered dwarf planets. And then there's about 171 moons of these planets. Now, all of the planets closer to the sun than the Earth have no moons, and all of the planets further away from the sun than the Earth have multiple moons. The Earth is the only planet that only has one moon. It's the only monogamous relationship. So the planet Mercury doesn't have a moon. It's a bachelor. The planet Venus, she doesn't have a moon. She's a bachelorette. The planet Mars has two moons, but the planet Jupiter has 63 moons. Now, this is very interesting because that's a lot of moons, okay? So let me get to the analogy of the, the planets here in the solar system. You have the Son of God compared to the Sun in the solar system, which is an easy comparison because the light of the world scriptures and Jesus is the light and all light comes through Jesus and the sun is the light for the solar system. Easy comparison. However, when it comes to the moon, the moon is an anomaly in our solar system. Our sun was created about 4.6 billion years ago. And our moon, they believe, was created a few hundred million years after that. So about 4.5 billion years ago, our moon came into existence. Now, again, they know that mathematically that it was impossible for the Earth to capture the moon with just its gravity. So what happened is, and the predominant theory is something very, very large crashed into our Earth and the Earth became molten rock and a piece of the Earth flung off and started to spin and became our moon. In fact, they believe this big crash may have happened several times for the moon to get such a, a large size. So what does the moon do for the earth? The moon balances the spin of the earth so that we have relatively um, constant seasons and constant seasons on a world with a lot of water allows for life to flourish. So the moon is kind of the protector of the earth and the balancer of the earth. And the moon, as you can look at it, it's got all these pock marks in it from attracting asteroids. It sucks in asteroids. Those asteroids probably would have hit the earth, but they hit the moon. So the moon is somewhat of a protector of the earth. Now, of all the 193 objects in the solar system, or 171, however you want to count, how many, what classifies as a moon or does not classify as a moon. It's between 171 and 193 objects. However you want to calculate it, all other things in our solar system were created differently than our moon. When the solar system became into existence, most of the objects in the solar system are particles and they particled up like Jupiter, pulled in gravity, pulled in mass, pulled in dust and became a planet. That's how most all other spherical objects in our solar system came to existence, except our moon. Our moon came from the side of the Earth. So in the story of the solar system, we have an anomaly, the moon. How did it become created? 
It became created from the side of something else. What does the book of Genesis say? It says that the plants came from the ground. The uh, animals came from the ground. The fowl in the air that fly in the air, they came from the ground and Adam came from the dust of the ground. So all of these living organisms all had something in common. They all came from the ground or the dust of the ground, except one creation. What's the anomaly of the story? Eve. Eve did not come from the ground. Eve was created from the side or the rib of Adam. So that's the anomaly in the book of Genesis. You have all these things created, creations, 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 except one thing, Eve comes from the side of something else. In the solar system, you have all these creations, these spherical objects all the way through, except for one thing, our moon. So to say that when Adam names Eve and he says in the book of Genesis, I named her Eve because she is the mother of all living, and then when you compare the story of our moon, that without our moon, a lot of scientists believe that we wouldn't have life here on Earth without a very large moon. So there is no life on the sun, there is no life on the moon that we know about, but all three, the sun, Earth, and moon, they dance through the cosmos and they have created a place, working together, all their powers working together, that is teeming with life. There is life all over the planet Earth. And it's the only place in the universe that we know that that can happen. So when Adam and Eve had to leave the garden, they had to look to Christ for everlasting life. And their posterity has the Christ that they're looking for as their savior. So that's the comparison there. Now, let's get to Jupiter. When Jupiter came into existence, Jupiter looked a lot like a small sun. And in fact, all scientists believe that if Jupiter would have gotten larger in size, it would have become a sun because it has the same basic makeup of hydrogen and helium that our sun does. It just didn't get large enough to have a uh, explosion and uh, nuclear fusion happening where it could produce light. There are many, many solar systems in our galaxy that have dual suns, but we only have one sun. And so, you have Jupiter trying to mimic the sun. And in comparison, you had Lucifer in the scriptures trying to mimic Jesus Christ. In fact, Jupiter has 63 moons. It has more moons than all other planets. Even the dwarf planet Pluto has five moons. But Jupiter has 63 moons. If you divide 63 moons into 191 spherical objects in the solar system, that's about one third. So when Jupiter came into existence, it drew with him, with his gravity, about one third of the items or spherical objects in the solar system. Now, if you turn to the book of Revelation, it says that when Satan was kicked out of heaven, when there was a war in heaven, Satan was kicked out of heaven, it drew with him, his tail, Satan with his tail, drew one third of the hosts of heaven. A lot of these comparisons are written in more detail in this great book that you should get, Big Bang Theory versus the Bible by John S. Pennington Jr. A lot more detail and I go back and forth with the scriptures and show you all the comparisons. All right, now, now that episode's over, listen. Please subscribe, we love your subscriptions. It tells us that you like what we do. Have a great day. See you next episode. Bye.